Welcome to another Paint at Home adventure. Today we're going to be painting the crest for Hogwarts School of Wizardry. We're going to be doing the Gryffindor, Slytherin, Hufflepuff, and Ravenclaw. So no matter what house you belong to, you're sure to have a good time. So let's make sure that you're set up and ready to go today. Let's go ahead and take that paper and open it up and put it on whatever table that you're working on or whatever surface you're going to be painting on so that we make sure in case there's any spills your tabletop is protected. Inside your kit we've placed a blue towel so in case there's any spills or if we need that for rinsing our brushes you'll have that handy to go. Inside your kit you'll find three brushes. We've got a large square, a medium square, and a nice round brush. You also have your pre-sketched canvas, so we're gonna set that right in the middle ready to go. Then we have your paint palette. We've got a canary yellow, red for the Gryffindor house, blue for Ravenclaw, a green oxide for our Slytherin house, white, black, and purple. And then of course the yellow is for Hufflepuffs. And then you'll wanna run and grab a glass and fill it about halfway full with water and we'll use that for rinsing out our brushes so we can switch back and forth. So go ahead and pause the video and let's get set up and then we'll go ahead and start painting. All right, let's begin. So we're gonna start a painting by painting in all of our house mascots with the black paint. So I'm gonna use this little tiny round brush the entire time that I'm painting in the mascots. So I'm gonna start with Ravenclaw first and then as I paint I'm going to start to kind of rotate my painting around. So I'm going to just lift my canvas off just a little bit with one hand to hold it steady. I'm going to carefully take just the tip end of the brush and put it in a little bit of the black paint. I'm not going to grab too much paint because I don't want to make a mess on my canvas or put a big glob of paint. And I'm gonna start right on the inside line. So the reason why I'm starting here instead of up on the top of the feathers is because I wanna get used to the brush and what the paint feels like. And once I kind of get a feel for how the paint is, it's a nice, smooth paint, it's not very thick, then I can get a little bit more brave and go into those feathers. So again, I'm just putting a little bit of paint right on the very tip of this brush. And now that I'm a little bit used to this brush and what it feels like and how the paint feels on the tip of the brush, I'm gonna start right at the tip of these feathers and I'm gonna start to paint the feathers. And I'm just using the very lightest touch when I paint these. I don't wanna to push too hard or the bristles are gonna fan out and it's gonna cause a really wide bristle and a really wide feather. So I'm gonna come in here and just shape each feather. Very light touch. If your bristles start to fan out on you, you can roll your brush to reshape those bristles into a nice point. And that'll help you get into some of those detailed places on your canvas. Another thing that's great about starting with our mascots is as we're working, you can turn the canvas to get into some of the side spots. So if it's easier for you to turn the canvas to paint the feathers, you can do that also. So move the canvas around however you need to to get into those feathers and paint. and then I'm gonna paint his beak. So I'm gonna turn the picture straight up and down. Now as you're painting with this black color, 
it's going to be a little bit transparent, so we'll see a little bit of the canvas in the background. But right now we're just going to put one coat of paint, and then we'll come back towards the end of the painting, and we'll put a second coat of black paint on. And there we have our Ravenclaw. So the great thing about working with the video is if I'm painting a little bit slower than you are, you can fast forward to the next mascot. And if you need a little bit more time, then you can just pause and catch up and then start the next mascot when you're ready. So I'm just gonna fuss over a couple feathers really quick. And I'm gonna move straight across to Hufflepuff, and I'm going to start Hufflepuff next. I'm going to turn my canvas to the side. I want to be really careful that I don't accidentally rub my side of my hand across the black paint and smear it. That would be disastrous. Alright, so moving on to Hufflepuff. I'm going to start up with his cute little notes. And underneath his chin, across the top of his head, and to his cute little ear. I'm going to follow the outline down his back and straight to his little tail. Now as we're working with this black, it's a nice um, flowing color. It's nice and smooth to paint with. So we just want to make sure that we smooth out any um, raised paint that might be on the canvas because we do want this to dry nice and even. I'm going to come right underneath his belly. He's like, please don't tickle me. There we go. I'm going to turn him right side up and I'm going to set the canvas down and I'm going to work on his little paw. So I'm going to work on this top paw first. It's almost like he's giving me a high five saying, hey, you're doing a great job. And straight down. So my trick with painting, whenever I'm working in little tiny areas, is I'll always try to outline the little part that I'm working on. So if I'm working on a leg, I'll fill in the bottom of his foot, and then I'll outline the leg. So that way, all I have left to do is color in the part on the inside. So it's almost like I've drawn the lines inside a coloring book. And it gives me a little bit more of a straight line around the edges. So I'm going to do the same thing for his back leg. I'm going to start by filling in his back foot, and then I'm going to trace the lines going right up one side of his leg and then following the back side of his leg. Then I've got all the white on the inside and I'm just going to fill it in almost like a coloring book. And the whole time I'm still pressing very, very light with my round paintbrush. I don't want to press too hard else my bristles are going to spread out and I'm going to get really, really wide lines. So now that we've got Ravenclaw looking amazing and Hufflepuff giving me a high five, I'm going to turn my canvas and now on to Slytherin. Again, I'm going to take my brush right into that black paint and very gently with the brush, not pressing hard. 
I'm going to start right at the top of the snake. And the body. So I'm kind of applying the same concept. I'm just trying to trace those outside lines. And then I'm going to fill it in like a coloring book. And then if you want to put a tongue on your snake, we can do that at the very end of the painting. If we do that now, it might get lost when we put the background on. Gorgeous. So I'm going to take my painting, I'm going to turn it one last time, and I'm actually going to paint my lion upside down. I think it's a little bit easier to paint than right side up. Again, I've got a nice clean area on my canvas. So if I'm painting, I can drag my hand right here and I don't have to worry about accidentally rubbing the side of my hand into black paint. So I'm gonna start with just a tiny bit of black paint on the end of my brush. I'm gonna start with this cute little feet back here. Using the very tip of my brush, I'm going to paint his back legs and his ankles. And we are going to paint in the Gryffindor house mascot. I will paint his paws and his chest. And then up to the top of his head and his mane. And I'm going to save his tail for the very last. And finally his tail. And the little puff of fur right at the end. All right, there we go. So we're going to let this first black layer of paint dry really good before we move on with the painting. So while we're letting it dry, we're going to rinse out this black brush. I'm going to take it over to the water. I'm going to press it down all the way to the bottom of the cup and just move it back and forth really gently. I'm going to take my blue towel right next to the water. So when my brush comes out, I can set it onto the blue towel and give it a little squeeze to just dry that off really nice. And then I'll set my towel aside. I'm going to use this brush for my next step, but we want to make sure that all of the black has dried on our mascots because we don't want to accidentally hit that with any of the background paint colors because it will smear into the background. So go ahead and pause the video for a few minutes. Let's make sure all of the black in the background has had a chance to dry. And then I'll see you in a few minutes and we'll start painting our house colors. Welcome back. So all of our black should be dried and set up now. For the next part of our painting, we're gonna add all of the colors in behind our house mascots. And to do that, I'm gonna be switching back and forth between the small square and the round brush. So I'm gonna set those off to the right hand side because I'm right handed and it'll be a little bit easier for me to grab those as I'm painting. So we're gonna start with Hufflepuff. So I'm gonna rotate the canvas and put Hufflepuff so that it's right in front of me so that I'm not worried about smearing any paint as I'm going. 
So to get around our badger, I'm going to start with the small round brush and I'm gonna take the paint, our yellow paint, and we're gonna outline very carefully the outside line of the badger. Now, if you get a little bit of paint and it overlaps the black, that's okay, don't worry, because when we add our second coat of black, we can touch up any paint that overlapped onto the black at the very end. All right, so I'm gonna start with my round brush. I'm gonna grab a little bit at the very end of the brush, and I'm gonna start to do an outline right around the badger. And this is such a gorgeous color for Hufflepuff. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just create a really simple outline right around the entire badger before I paint with the larger brush. I wanna make sure that all that hard work that I did doesn't get covered up with such a big brush. Hufflepuffs are very hard workers. They are extremely patient. They are extremely loyal. They will stick by your side through thick and thin. These are definitely great friends to have. And if you have read the Harry Potter series, they have a very interesting way of getting into their dormitory rooms. So I promise that I will not give away any spoilers to any of the movies or any of the books, but it is a very interesting way that they get into their dormitories. All right, so now that I've outlined my badger, I'm just gonna rest this brush into the water. I'm gonna go ahead and switch to the tiny square brush and I'm gonna to start to fill in these bigger areas. If I tried to do this with that little round brush, guys, we would be here for a very long time together. And I'm gonna go right up to the line of the crest. So I'm gonna paint all the way up to this top line and then the one that comes down and he's gonna be this bottom quarter panel. Don't worry about any color that got into your black. We're gonna wait almost till the end and then put a second coat of black on, but we don't wanna do that quite yet. I'm gonna take the picture and turn him face up. 
and then we're gonna rinse out our brushes and get ready for the next color. I'm gonna take my towel and bring it all the way over to the cup of water that I have so I don't drip on the canvas. I'm gonna take my brushes all the way down to the bottom of my glass and wiggle them back and forth, and that'll give me a nice, clean brush. We wanna make sure we rinse off as much of the yellow as we can so it doesn't blend with any of our other colors. So I'm done with that square brush. I'm gonna set that there so you can see it, and you can set yours on the paper. I'm gonna rinse off the round brush nice and clean, dry it off on the towel, and I'm also drying off the handle of the brush so it doesn't drip water on my canvas. And I've got two nice clean brushes to use. So again, I'm gonna start with the round brush and I'm gonna rotate my canvas and I'm gonna go up to the house of Slytherin. I'm gonna move this quarter panel Slytherin right in front of me so I'm not worried about running my hand across any other colors. I'm going to take the round brush and I'm going to start with the inside of the snake. So this green oxide is a pretty transparent color to paint with and it's going to look a little bit like a velvet tapestry. So I'm going to use little tiny brush strokes almost like I'm pecking at the canvas and it's going to give it a little bit of a texture behind the snake. So we'll see a little bit of that canvas peeking through. It will still be covered in green, but the green is a very light color. So we want to make sure that we push out all of those lumps of green that could be in the paint. So I'm going to go ahead and come up and work on the outline that's around the snake with my little round brush. I'm just kind of tap, 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 tapping. Just a little bit of paint on the brush. Same thing as our badger, if you get a little bit of green in that black, don't panic because we can clean that up when we add our second coat of black. Great job. I'm going to set this brush in the water. My water is turning a magnificent color of Slytherin, by the way. Must be some magic in the air here. I'm going to switch to my small square brush. I'm going to grab some of that green oxide and I'm going to pat the canvas as I paint. And then that's going to give me this really cool texture. When it dries, it's going to look like a velvet tapestry. So I'm going to be really careful when I come by the house of Gryffindor. I don't want to go over that line too much. Come up and around top and then I'm going to pat to kind of mess up that really pretty line that I did. So Slytherin is also a fantastic 
house at Hogwarts. Now, sometimes I think it doesn't get the credit it deserves because when you see a snake, you might think, oh, this house is very crafty and maybe very sneaky, but it's also a very ambitious house, which is not a bad thing, guys. They've got a lot of drive. They possess a lot of leadership skills and they are very resourceful. So again, I'm just patting the canvas to kind of mess up any pretty lines that I have. And when it dries, it's gonna look like velvet. So if you are chosen to be part of the Slytherin house, I hope that you don't mind water and that you're very good at remembering passwords. All right, so we're gonna rinse our two brushes and get ready for our next house. Taking my brush all the way to the bottom of the glass, I'm gonna rub it back and forth. I'm gonna dry it on the blue towel. And then I'm gonna do the same with the round brush. And then we're gonna move houses to Ravenclaw. Let's turn our canvas and start Ravenclaw. So we're gonna put Ravenclaw down in front of us and starting with our small round brush, we're gonna pick up that Ravenclaw blue and we're gonna start by filling in all of the areas between the wings. So just a little bit of blue on your brush and just a really light touch will fill in all of those spaces between the wings. And we're gonna start by outlining the body of the Ravenclaw house mascot, and then we'll fill in the rest of the band. So our Ravenclaw mascot is not a raven, it is an eagle, and if you've ever had the chance to see an eagle in real life, they are absolutely magnificent. They are stunning and beautiful. So I'm gonna work right around our eagle. be careful right around the talons. Now if I cover up the talons, don't worry because we can come back and paint those in again. The eagle is a little bit more delicate because he has more tiny little things on him like the feathers and the talons. I'm gonna set my round brush in the water. Switching over to that small, clean square brush, I'm gonna to continue to fill in the background blue of the Hogwarts crest for the House of Ravenclaw. If your yellow hasn't dried yet, please be very careful and either let your yellow finish drying before you paint the blue or be very careful that you don't touch the yellow. If your blue hits the yellow, 
it's going to mix together and it's going to create green. So we just want to make sure that your colors don't touch and mix. So I'm going to pick up the blue and I'm going to continue to paint Ravenclaw. The first coat of blue that you put on is going to be a little bit thin. This is a really nice smooth paint also. So you can choose to put one coat of blue on or two coats of blue paint and you can make it as dark or as light as you want to. So if you are fortunate enough to be part of the Ravenclaw family, then you are um, considered to be very intelligent. You love wisdom and you're very witty, which means you have a very good sense of humor. And it's very fitting that if you belong to the Ravenclaw house, not only are you intelligent and have a great, very clever sense of humor, that your dormitory would have amazing views of mountaintops. Very fitting if the mascot is an eagle. Perfect. So I might let the blue dry and then come back a little bit later when I'm done with the painting and maybe add a second coat to it. But I kind of like seeing the white peeking through and the different colors coming through in the blue because I really feel like that eagle is flying through the sky. All right, and finally, Gryffindor. I saved this red for last because red is such a strong color that I wanted to make sure it didn't blend with any of the colors or that we accidentally had any left on your brush. So let's go ahead and rinse out our two brushes and get ready for the Gryffindor house. I definitely think there might be some Slytherin magic in here because our cup of water is definitely matching the Slytherin house. I don't know how you guys did it out there that are Slytherin fans, but that is pretty, pretty crafty indeed. You are definitely true to your name. You'll find also that with all of the mixture of colors that we've been using, and our bristles on our acrylic brushes that not only has Slytherin turned our water green, but it'll start to stain the very, very tips of our brushes green. So if you want to check and make sure that your brushes are clean, you can try to brush them off onto your paper and you'll see that if they don't leave any color, then they are indeed clean. If you see any, any green left on your paper then you might want to try to rinse them again or maybe at this point clean out your glass of water and maybe get a fresh glass of water. Moving on to Gryffindor I'm going to turn our mascot which is a lion with that clean quarter straight down at me so for just a little while the Gryffindor lion is going to be upside down but he is courageous and brave. He has a lot of nerve and chivalry. So I think he will be okay. I'm gonna come into this beautiful scarlet red paint and I'm gonna start with an outline around our lion. So it's kind of funny with this is if you actually start 
where the mouth is, it almost looks like he's breathing fire in a weird way. I tried that with one painting where I started with red around the lion's mouth and then you can make fire. So for a few minutes, the Gryffindor mascot is not just a lion, but he is a fire breathing lion. Sorry about that to the Gryffindor fans, but it is kind of a kind of a cool thing that I just made up. So again, I'm just using that little round brush, getting into some of these hard to reach spots. Going around his little feet. The lion mascot is very similar to the eagle, it has a lot of detail, so it takes just a little bit more patience to paint around all of those details. All right, guys, if you were a fan of my fire breathing lion, I'm sorry to say it's gone. And if you were not a fan of my fire breathing lion, you will be happy to know that he is not breathing fire anymore. There we go. So I've got a nice red border around the line. I'm going to put this into the water. I'm going to switch brushes and I'm going to go ahead and finish the outside border with this really pretty red paint. So what's interesting is on the crest at Hogwarts and the flags, the color is red, but on the actual um, scarves the color is maroon so we're going to use the scarlet red for the crest and if you are chosen to be part of the Gryffindor house at Hogwarts School of Wizardry I certainly hope that you are not afraid of heights because their dorm is in one of the highest towers at Hogwarts So make sure you give yourself plenty of time to get to class and don't be late because it sounds like you have a very long way to walk to your classes.
Great job. So now we have our four house colors. I'm going to take my square brush and put it into the water and I'm going to go ahead and turn my Hogwarts pressed all the way around so I can take a really good look and see how it's coming along. I'm going to rinse out my two brushes and set those back to the side. I can use those again if we need those. Let your color set up and dry really nice. And then we're going to move on to our background. With our background, we're going to have some options. We can paint the background with the purple, very similar to the original painting that we did. In our background, you might also want to choose maybe to try something different. You can paint the background all in black if you'd like to, or you might want to paint it to match your house color. So for example, if you are um, a Gryffindor fan. You might want to paint your background all in red and I'll show you a really cool technique that we're going to do with the paint that'll give it this texture right here which is this really light texture. So it kind of sets it apart from what it looks like on the canvas. Then we're going to outline the crest in black which will help it pop off the canvas. Now, if you choose to paint the background in black, then you're not gonna have this black edge right here. And instead, when we outline in black, you'll be outlining in white instead. So we've got a couple choices that you can make. So again, you can choose to paint the background color in your house color, and then follow the outlining and the inside lines in black. You can choose to paint the outline, the outside, in black, and then instead of doing the outlines in black, you can do those in white. Or you can follow what I'm going to do, which is painting in purple. All right, so let's get started. We're gonna switch to the large square brush that we have not used yet and then you're going to choose your background color. So choose your background color now. I'm going to choose purple, just like the one that's on the picture in the kit that you purchased. I'm gonna take the tip of my brush and I'm gonna dip it into the paint so the very tip of it has color on both sides. Then when I paint on the canvas, I'm gonna use marks that are back and forth marks, almost like the letter X. So it makes the paint thin in some areas and a little bit thicker in others. And I'm gonna paint until the brush almost runs dry. I'm gonna pick up a little bit more paint and then I'm gonna continue that same process. I'm gonna repeat what I just did. It's gonna make the paint look very different. So instead of painting in long lines, are getting one solid color in the background, it's gonna give me a very textured background or something that looks a little choppy. So no matter what color paint you choose, it's going to have a lot of movement in the paint. So go ahead and begin to choose your color and you can begin to paint the background. If you choose black, then black will come out as one solid color just like your mascots. Black will be a little bit harder to get this texture with. Then 
then as I'm working, I'm gonna be very, very careful to make sure that I'm getting the very edges of my canvas on all four sides. So I'm just gonna come in and I'm gonna pat this canvas. So even though we're the ones doing all the painting, it's almost like we're patting the canvas saying, hey, great job, you did a good job today. So let's go ahead and paint the sides of the canvas, all of our four edges, and all around the crest of our canvas either in your house color, black, or in purple.
job. So we're gonna let the background dry and then we're gonna come back and fill in our black and add our details and finish up our painting. I'm gonna rinse out my brushes and I'm gonna use my small round brush to come back and put my second coat of paint inside of my mascots. And the second coat of paint is gonna go really quick because all of the hard work's been done already. The goal here is to just do any touch-ups that I need to inside of the mascots that I've already painted. So I'm just adding a quick second coat right over the eagle's wings. And on any parts where the white could be peeking through. I'm just using a very, very, very light touch with the brush. And just adding a little, little tiny bit of paint. Just to clean them up and redefine them. Then I'm going to very carefully turn my painting clockwise or counterclockwise so that I can clean up each of my characters. I wanna be careful because the background paint could still be wet, so we wanna make sure that we don't get that on our hands. So I'm gonna turn this very carefully and start to just clean up these characters. So this is where if you'd like to give your snake a little bit of a tongue, you can do that now and just add a little tongue coming right out of his mouth. I'm going to turn my painting again and then I'll have a Gryffindor in front of me. One more turn and then I'll have the house of Hufflepuff and our badger. really see this quick second coat of black paint really gives these houses a really sharp crisp color to their mascots and really helps them stand out from the background 
And you'll also see that any paint that you got onto the black just melts away into the background and you can't even see that it's there. We'll just let that be hidden underneath there. Nobody needs to know about that. The wizarding magic of acrylic paint. Fantastic. When you're done, we'll rinse out the round brush. We're going to need it one more time before we're done. I'm going to set that clean brush to the side and I'm going to turn my painting straight up and down. And wow, look at those guys, they look great. I'm going to move to my square brush. If you used a colored background for your house, we're going to use black to outline our crust. If you used black in your background, then you'll use white to outline, or you can opt out of outlining in the background, which means you don't have to put an outline. So again, if you used a colored background, which is any of the house colors are purple, we're gonna outline in black, just like the original painting. If you chose a black background, then you might want to outline your crest in white. So I'm going to use a square brush. I'm going to use the very edge of my brush. So instead of the flat side of my brush, I'm going to always be using the edge of my brush and I'm going to hold it just like a pencil. So when I use the paint, I'm going to hold my brush straight up and down, just like a pencil, so that I'm always on the edge of my brush instead of on the flat side of my brush. And then what I'm gonna do is when I outline, I'm gonna drag that edge and I'm gonna follow that outside line, but I'm always going to be on the edge of my brush. There's no time that I'm ever gonna turn my brush flat and use the flat side of my brush. I'm always going to be up on the edge. So I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to dip it into the black paint so I have a little bit of black paint on the very bottom of the brush. I'm going to hold it like a pencil and come straight up and down and then I'm going to start to outline the side of my crest. I'm going to start from the very top and in one line I'm going to go from the top to the bottom without lifting my paintbrush. If I run out of paint I'm going to grab a little bit more. I'm going to come back to the top. I'm going to outline again and then I'm going to lift my brush. I always keep my brush on the canvas to get a really nice outline. Next, I'm going to do the bottom uh, raven cloth, which is our eagle. I'm going to start from this corner and I'm going to go down to the bottom. I'm going to turn my canvas just a little bit to make it a little bit easier so I can go from the top down to the bottom. I'm going to take my bristles. I'm going to put black on just the bottom, not too much. I'm going to start at the top and on the edge of my brush, I'm going to go from the top down to the bottom. Again, if I run out of paint, I can grab a little bit more paint and I'll start from the top and go down to the bottom, but I'm not going to lift the brush off the canvas and that'll give me those nice clean lines. All right, my mascots are going to get dizzy from me turning them around so much today. Next, we're gonna go from the bottom of the crest underneath Hufflepuff, our house badger, all the way to the corner. And add a little bit of black 
paint to the bottom of my brush. On the edge of my brush, I'm gonna come straight down one long line. I can see a little bit of the yellow peeking through, so I'm gonna go for it a second time, adding a little bit more black, and then I'm gonna add a second coat of black. Making my mascot stizzy again, I'm going to turn my canvas and I'm going to do the side of the crust the same way. A little bit of paint starting at the edge. One long motion. Go all the way around. All right, so now we've got the top of the crust facing us. I'm going to start in the middle and I'm going to move down and away from me. Adding some paint. I'm going to move away and over. And this seems to be the easiest way to get this line. If you want to try it a different way, by all means, you absolutely can. Go. I'm going to do the same on the other side. Staying on the edge of my brush, I just follow those lines. And I can almost pretend that my brush is on a roller coaster. Fantastic. All right, I'm gonna keep my arm floating above my canvas. I'm not gonna drag my arm across the canvas. I'm gonna start from the top and I'm gonna outline the straight line from Ravenclaw all the way down to Slytherin. Keep your arm up and do not let it rub on your canvas, else we're gonna smear the black paint. Here we go. One nice straight line from Ravenclaw to the top of our crest. And you can go over that line twice if you'd like. Keep your brush on the canvas, don't lift it up. There you go. I'm gonna turn the canvas. Either way is fine. If you want it on this side with Gryffindor and Hufflepuff, or if you want it on the other side with Slytherin, and Raven's Claw, doesn't matter. I'm gonna start from one side and I'm gonna to come towards me. And we're gonna divide our crest completely so that all four houses are now divided on the crest. And there we have it. So I'm not gonna fuss with my lines too much. Sometimes when you keep going over your lines, they tend to get a little sideways and the lines get bigger and bigger and then it's harder to keep them looking nice. So I'm gonna stop right here. I'm gonna rinse out my brushes, let all the black on your canvas dry. We're gonna add the finishing touches, which really make this come to life. We're going to add our house seal from the Hogwarts Academy, representing all of our house seals that we have, our Gryffindor, Slytherin, Hufflepuff, and Ravenclaw and our white highlights to really make this stand out. So let's let this dry and then I'll see you back in just a couple minutes. So we're gonna add some white highlights to our picture to really make this pop out and come to life. I'm gonna start with a dry square brush. If you have a colored background, then we're gonna be using white paint to do some highlights. If you have a black background and you used white lines, then you can use black 
paint to kind of give it a counter effect instead of the white paint. So we're gonna use it just the same. I'm gonna take a clean, small square brush. I'm gonna put the bristles and I'm gonna barely tap them into the white paint. And then I'm gonna find a clean spot on my plate and I'm gonna tap the bristles off so that they're very dry, so that there's hardly any paint on the brush that's left. So this is called a dry brush technique. I'm gonna take these bristles and I'm gonna outline this outside mark that I started out with. So coming up on the edge of my brush, I'm just gonna drag my brush and give it a little bit of a white highlight. So you'll hear that brush scratching against the canvas. I'm gonna take a very dry brush and I'm just gonna come along right inside of each of the black lines and drag a little bit of white paint. And you'll see that it starts out kind of bold and then it gradually disappears. So just a tiny, tiny bit of white paint. I'm really tapping it off hard into the plate. So even when I touch it with my finger, I'm hardly getting any paint on my finger. And I'm just dragging it right inside of each of the lines. So we wanna make sure that our black paint is dry so it doesn't blend and kind of create a mess on the canvas. So we're just giving it some color so it kind of lifts off the page and gives it a little bit of dimension. Then very carefully I'm gonna do the inside marks that separate the four quarters of our house's of Hogwarts. If you feel like the white's a little bit light, then you can go over it again with a second coat and darken it up. I always tend to start a little bit easy with the paint. And then I can darken it up if I'd like. There's just a little glimmer of light in there. Very nice. We're done with the square brush. So I'm gonna set that in the water and I'll clean that off when we're done. I'm gonna move on to the little tiny round brush and then I'm gonna give each of our characters just a little glimmer of shading and highlight so they pop off of the canvas. So our lion, Slytherin, our snake, Hufflepuff, our badger, and Ravenclaw, our eagle. So starting with Gryffindor, I'm gonna take the very tip of our round brush and a small, tiny bit of white paint, a very dry brush again. So I'm just gonna kind of roll this paintbrush right onto my tray, trying to remove some of the paint that I put on the brush. So I've got a very dry brush. I'm gonna come right off the back of the mane of the lion and a little bit down his back. Pressing very lightly. And then if I'd like to, I can darken that up with a little bit more white paint. And make that highlight pop out just a little bit more. 
Moving over to Slytherin, I'm gonna give him his highlight right down here on this little underside of the snake. On Hufflepuff, we're going to come right along with the back of the badger's neck. And then on the eagle, I'm going to run the highlight from his wing all the way down to his body without going into his body. just a nice dry brush. So again, if you'd like those lines a little bit darker, you can make them darker or a little bit lighter with more white, you can do that as well. The great thing about the white is say, if you didn't like how it turned out, you can paint over it with black, let it dry, and then you can try again. Our final finishing touch is your house seal for the Hogwarts Wizarding Academy, which represents our wizarding school of magic for all our houses. Um, with this, you can do a couple different things with that. With this, you can keep this and put this anywhere you'd like to. If you want to tuck it in a binder, if you want to put it by your um, computer, uh, you can do anything that you'd like to. Or you can attach it right in the center of your crest to represent the wizarding school. If you'd like to attach it to your project that we did today, this fantastic painting, the only thing that you need is just a little bit of glue. You can use whatever type of um, adhesive that you have at home. And just using a paintbrush, you can even use a Q-tip if you have a Q-tip at home. We dry that off. I got a little bit of water on my canvas. I can add glue to the back of my seal. And I can attach that right to my crest, representing all of the four houses of Hogwarts. Congratulations on an amazing painting. I hope that you enjoyed your time and we'll see you again for another wonderful painting at home. Have a fantastic day.